The message this morning is Thou thinkest, Lord, of me. Taking from a hymn book, 566. Amid the trials that I meet, amid the thorns that pierce my feet, one thought remains to pray. my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Read 15 to 18 now. 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with thee. David said, all his members were written in the book. That is the book of life in heaven. Even when he was yet to be perfected in his mother's womb. As for David to be written in the book of life, it means David had been chosen unto the truth in his mother's womb. And that truth has been a sheet and buckler, that is his divine protection. From the mother's womb, even before he was born, it means also that God's good thoughts toward David have been from the mother's womb. And David said, these thoughts of God towards him were very precious and were more in number than the sand. So much too that he could not count them. And David said, in his lying down, and in his waking up, God always thought of him. And that God knew everything about him. And every detail of his life, God knew about it. And that God even understood his own thought from afar. Verse 2 to 3. Psalm 139, verse 2. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts are far off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. You see, how God loved this David. Because from the mother of me down, choose unto the truth. And David even said, he said God was very, very familiar with all his ways. Because God was very near him. It means, therefore, that David chose the way of truth and walked in it. Not because he willed to, but because God has foreknown him and predestinated him, that he set him apart unto this truth from the mother's womb, even before he was born. As it was the case of Prophet Jeremiah, 
Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. Verse 5. Verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And so some of us who have chosen this way of truth and have been walking in it, it's simply because God has foreknown us. And he don't predestinate us like David and Jeremiah unto the truth in our mother's womb. And so at this so appointed time, he can call us out of the spiritual families of Satan who are always walking in darkness, in false truth, and in false light. Into the spiritual family of this truth, the true light. We will say Jesus now be the firstborn of this family. And so we are now his brothers and sisters. Do his will by walking in the truth. Romans 8, 29 to 30. Romans 8, 29 to 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. The glory of God is upon those who have been chosen unto this truth from the modern soul. They have been glorified. Here on earth, and when they enter heaven, they will receive the crown of glory. Matthew 12, 48 to 50. Matthew 12, 48. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. The same is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus Christ can identify, that is, identify himself more with the spiritual family of these two than with his own biological family. Because it is this spiritual family that is recognized in heaven by his Father. Amos 3, verse 2. Amos 3, verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Why? Because they are the children of God, the Father of Jesus. They are not bastards. That is why the Lord thinks always of them. And is very near to them. Because they are now a chosen generation, a holy nation, and of a royal priesthood as David. They are now a peculiar people unto God. First Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In the midst of all the trials, in the midst of all the cares of life, in the midst of those dark days of his life, this same man that said, he knew that the Lord thought of him and was very near him. Hence, he did not need to fear at all. And he was fully convinced that none of these trials or cares of life that he met in life who separate him from the law of this truth for which he had been chosen unto by God. Him now for verse 3. One of the hints we hope this video assures saying they near in own chosen generation, own chosen people unto this truth. He said, There's not an hour that he is not near us, have 
No night so dark was his love can share us up. That is, no, no single hour of our life, as we walk up and down, they lie down, they wake up, that God, Jesus, is not near us. Because we have been chosen to this truth. And we never forsake us, take note, in the midst of any storm that comes our way. Never. That's another for that will him now for now. Did any saint or this church family ever find this our friend, our brother, our elder brother, Jesus in this family? Find say Jesus got come forsake him. No, not one. Why will he not forsake any one of us in the midst of any storm, trial? Because it has pleased him to have chosen us as a special people unto this truth. Nobody will choose her, and I ain't choose us. To my mother soon, unto this truth. First Samuel 12, 22. First Samuel 12, 22. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Psalm 40, 17. Psalm 40, verse 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. As David said in this psalm, we will just read now. God also thinks of us in terms of need. In terms of our need, they think of you. In terms of poverty, that may temporarily come our way, they think of you. Because there are seasons and times under the sun. There's a time you have, there's a time there's nothing. Yet, he's thinking of you. He knows about it. And he will not delay to help us. And do for us Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in us. What is that power? The power in this word of truth. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Having known this, you don't need to be afraid of the future. Because our times and future are in the Lord's hands. All whom God has chosen unto this truth and are working in it, the time of weeping shall surely give way to a time of laughter. Is there in exercise three, four and eight? The, the time of mourning in prayers to God concerning any problem shall surely give way to a time of dancing and thanksgiving. The time of war that those who are shown on this truth are facing will surely give to way to a time of peace a God's own appointed time in answer to their prayers because the Lord is near them and he thinks of them and he will surely appear for their relief when they wrestle in prayer even your enemies will they trouble your life will they trouble you you are at war with them they are at war with you. It will surely give to it way to a time when God will make them to be at peace with you. Therefore, those who are choosing this truth, who have been on day for this truth, should be strong in the faith. Giving glory to God, even before they see the physical manifestation or their request. 
door before you call. He don't answer you. He's near you. Why you they pray? He's saying they hear. He's near you. Romans 4. 20 to 21. Romans 4, 20 to 21. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God promised Abraham his son. He never see the son, but he never staggered at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in the faith. See? Now God talk him. And every word of God, every promise of God that we hear from here, now God talk him. And so if you have faith in that promise, in that word, you surely come to pass at God's appointed time. That's why those who have been chosen to read through should smile at every storm that comes their way. Because the Lord God who is thinking about them it's in that storm, hiding his smiling face. Because he sees the boom that is coming after that storm. He allowed it. Even though Satan raised up that storm, it will not cause you a needless tear. It's for a purpose. Either to revive your prayer life or to try your feet. Whether you go jump out, go look for a solution somewhere. Now you are If you remain still in that storm, waiting for God's time, we go silent that storm. Then you see that you shall have peace. All the things we do pass through, not be storm. Not storm. Who raised up that storm against you? Satan. And he took permission from God. I mean, not be so. God said, go ahead. But Job came out of that storm. And he saw the blessing that came out I mean, after the storm. All the things we lose came back double. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Isaiah 50. 50. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Mm. No matter how bitter. The experiences those who have been chosen or to this through are passing through in life. No matter how dark their way may be, God is thinking of them and is near them. Even in those hopeless situations, we say hopeless. It's in that situation. It's near you and it's thinking of you. Is working out his divine program, his sovereign will concerning them. Because the thoughts of God towards them are not of evil, but of peace to bring them to an expected end. As long as they fear the Lord by walking in obedience to his doctrines and obedience to the words the Lord has put into the mouth of his servant to tell them. Because the word he has spoken through them shall surely come to pass. Whatever you are passing through, stay in this truth. Stay upon God. Trust in him. That someday, all this thing will give way to, to light. Remember the story of Joseph and the bitter experiences that he went through in life. Because he had been chosen by God for a divine purpose. 
In all these bitter experiences Joseph went through in life, God's thoughts towards Joseph were not of evil, but of peace to give Joseph an expected end. Remember that his own brothers planned to kill Joseph because Satan had to use them. You don't see the program we go around for the life of Joseph. That God has made a covenant with him. They are choosing him on the mother's womb to fear him, this Lord God. But God did not leave Joseph in their hands. And so the same thing, God will not leave us who have been chosen unto this truth from our mother's womb and we are working in it. He will not leave us into the hands of enemies inside our family, outside our family to kill. No. Psalm 37, 32 to 33. 37. 32 to 33. 32 to 33. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Even when these enemies are gnashing their teeth, boasting against you, God saying go laugh at them. Why go laugh at them? Because you know, say the time of their judgment, it don't, it don't come near. That's 12 to 13, no, that's 37, Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Yes. 12 to 13. to 13. The wicked plotted against the just and gnashed upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. <laughs> that is the promise of God for those who are in this truth, who have been chosen to do, who are walking in it. When God don't turn the evil plot of Joseph Barat into nothing, they now decided to set Joseph, Joseph into slavery. And so Joseph found himself in Pontifar's house as a servant, as a slave. From Pontifar's house, Satan only went alone. He can't set young agent again to make Joseph to commit adultery with her. From there, Joseph found himself in prison again. He saw that he went through in life. But inside that prison, who did with him? God, they think of him, Abby. So Joseph suffered for righteousness' sake. Yet he took it patiently and never murmured against God. And so when we suffer, our children of this family, for righteousness' sake, for doing well, I will take it patiently. That is what is acceptable before God. That's what pleases God. First Peter 2.20. First Peter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For Peter 3. First Peter 3. 14. 14. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Joseph was not afraid of the terror of the brethren or the terror of Pontifar's wife. So what do I teach we are passing through as people chosen unto this truth? We should yet trust this God who is near us and who always thinks of us. For all these things that we are passing through, we work out together for our good. As he did work out together for the good of Joseph, when God, in the end, promoted Joseph to be second in command to King Pharaoh, that was the expected end, the way they bring out. Now, it is, it is important to know that those who have not been chosen by God unto this truth, 
from the foundation of the world upon their mother's womb. Even though they, they decide to choose this way of truth, they will eventually fall out of this family. 4 John 2 19. 1 John 2 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Judas was not chosen by God unto this truth from the mother's womb. No. Even though he walked with Jesus, but Judah did not walk in the truth. Yet he chose this way of truth and began to follow Jesus. Matthew 26, 24 C. Matthew 26. 24 C. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Whom is Jesus talking about here? Judas. So Jesus had regretted is coming into this world at all. The Lord never thought of Judas for good. Otherwise, if for no regret, is birth into the world. And so many are called to know this truth, but only few are chosen unto this truth from their mother's womb. John 6, 37 first. John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. That is those whom we don't ordain, we don't predestinate, we don't choose from the mother's womb, from their mother's womb. Now God, they give to his son, Jesus Christ, to give him eternal life. These are the ones that we are abiding to and walk in it to the end of their journey to heaven. Now these ones, Jesus Christ, they think of all the time. You know, go cast them out of the gates of heaven. You know, go cast them out of his divine protection. You know, go cast them out of his presence. Those guys say, anyone with Baba no plant, you go root out. We will be part of those who have been chosen, the few that have been chosen from my mother's son onto this street. And to walk in it until we enter heaven. That is the expected end of coming to this truth. David was not only chosen unto this truth from the mother son, and did not only choose the way of this truth and walked in it, but he also bore witness of this truth. That's why David come plead, come pray to God, say, God, do not take this word of truth utterly from my mouth. Psalm 119 Psalm 119 43 verse 43 and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth so we that have been chosen unto this truth for our mother's womb and we are walking in obedience to the instructions we should pray that God should open our mouth Abby, to do with him that's why you were born into this world. And that's the general talent God has given to every member, everyone that he chooses unto this truth. Don't hide that talent. Just stand to pray. Let's thank God for this amazing grace of having been chosen unto this truth from the foundation of the world. We will thank God for this grace. Prayer. It's a privilege. To be chosen from a mother's womb to this truth, if you are one of them. Let's thank you for writing our names in the Lamb Book of Life. It's a privilege. From the foundation of the world, as David was treating the Book of Life from his mother's womb, let's thank him. Let's pray that Lord will empower us so, to overcome every temptation of Satan that may come our way to remove our name from that book of life. May God give up power to overcome Satan and all his temptations. So our names remain written permanent in that book of life.
Pray against every subtle plan of Satan, using his human agent around us, to seduce us to commit sin willfully. We go make the Holy Spirit depart from us and be taken from us. Let's pray that all the storm that come our way as members of this prayer family make it work out together for our good. Oh. Pray that Lord will give us the grace to bear all the dark days that may come our way. Patiently, even though for righteousness says we have been persecuted, may God give us the grace to bear patiently. And to trust in him, may God give us the grace to trust. Whatever we're passing to, may God give us to trust. See, he's with us. He's thinking of us. He's near us. Maybe we pray that nothing, no human agent or Satan, no creature, even angels or servant of God, so-called, whether now they know or they know, all their plans to separate us from the love of this truth make God frustrate their plan. That nothing will separate us from the love of this truth that is in Christ Jesus. All the arrow whether they throw, through their words against our faith. May God give all the grace to use it of faith to quench these arrows. Every plan of Satan to bring temperature away so our name will be taken out of the book of life. We will pray against the plan of Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this assurance that you have given us again today. That thou, O Lord, thinkest so much of us. And you are nigh unto us. That when we call you, even before we call you, Lord, you have already answered. And while we are yet speaking to you, you have heard us. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that as you were with Joseph in his life's journey as a pilgrim, because he trusted in you, he never murmured nor complained. Lord, whatever experience of life we are passing through, help us to trust you. Amen. May our faith, O oh Lord, not die. Amen. So that your promises, O oh Lord, as we hold fast to them, Lord, may they break with blessings upon our heads. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Above all, O oh Lord, we pray. Keep us, O oh Lord, in this spiritual family. Yeah. Obeying this truth. Obeying the voice of your servant. So that at the end, O oh Lord, we will rest at your feet. Yeah. May our names, O oh Lord, not be blotted out yeah. from the book of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, mighty God, hear and answer this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.